What's next for health care? For the answer to that, we turn to Jamel Bowie, chief political correspondent at Slate and a CBS News political contributor. He's in our Washington bureau. Jamel, good morning. Good morning. So Reince Priebus was seen as the guy that was sort of a bridge. He was obviously a part of that Republican Party and a bridge to uh, the Capitol Hill for the president. What does that mean for legislation going forward now that he's no longer with the White House? I think this very much complicates the Trump administration's efforts to get legislation through Congress. Uh, Reince was the link to uh, Republicans on the Hill, as was Sean Spicer. Um, it, it seems that the White House is pushing out people who had those ties to the kind of official Republican Party. And without them, I mean, you, when you bring in sort of the treatment of Jeff Se Attorney General Jeff Sessions as well, you begin to get the impression that the White House is really burning its links and burning its bridges with Republicans on the Hill. And so President Trump obviously has an agenda that he wants to get through Congress. But when you are letting go the kinds of people who would be able to make the connections, uh, make the build the relationships necessary to move an agenda through Congress, when you're getting rid of those people, uh, it's begins to get, become difficult to see how one accomplishes that agenda. Uh, and on that agenda, back to health care and, and, the, and the effort to repeal and replace Obamacare, I mean, is, is there life left in the Republicans' effort to do that at this point? It, it's difficult to say. The thing that we've seen over this entire six-month health care saga is that for as much as the Republican Party had a slogan over the last seven years, repeal and replace Obamacare, there is no real consensus about what that meant in practice. Uh, did people want, did Republicans want to go back to the pre-Obamacare status quo? Did they want to keep some parts of the law and, and, and kind of get rid of others? What direction did they want to go, go through? And it's clear from kind of the repeated failure and, and missteps with these uh, health care bills in Congress that there is no consensus here. And so it, you, you can kind of imagine uh, Republicans making another go at it, uh, trying to advance another bill. But there, it's not clear there's a lowest common denominator here that everyone can agree to. And so, I, you know, I, this this. But all the health care bills in their various iterations have died and come back to life and died and come back to life. So I, I'm hesitant to say that the effort is dead. But it is increasingly clear that unless Republicans kind of sit down and really hash out what they want from health care reform, that they're going to run into the same problems. Jamel, what about the idea of bipartisan support? I mean, we heard from Schumer, we heard even from McCain about this idea of needing to work together. Is that just impossible here? Yeah, I think one of the problems is that Republicans and Democrats here have basically fundamentally different goals. I think if Republicans came to Democrats and said, here, here are these problems with the exchanges, the subsidy payments to insurers need to be more regular, uh, there are, there's a subsidy gap for actual consumers uh, such that if you make a little too much money, you, you kind of get subsidies are phased out for you. We can fix those problems uh, and, and make the exchanges more stable. Uh, and this would go towards making the law more stable in the long run. I think Democrats would accept that. But the problem is that Republicans aren't interested in making the law stable in the long run. Yeah. And broadly, they're not interested in the Democratic goal of universal coverage. And so because those goals, those are just fundamental divides here, I'm not sure there can be um, the kind of bipartisanship that I think people want, uh, just because it's just not, the parties are really on two separate paths here. All right. Jamel Bowie, thank you very much for being with us this morning. Thank you for having me.